penguin design here bringing you another exciting tutorial so today we're going to be creating a video game so this is going to be really exciting and let's get straight into it so first because we're going to be making a three-dimensional video game we need some sort of program to create three-dimensional meshes so my favorite in this area is cinema 4d or maya but in, for these tutorials, we're going to be using 3ds Max, and that's solely for the reason that we can actually get this for free. Um, so I'm going to show you how. So first, we're going to open up an internet browser. I'm going to be using Google Chrome, and we're going to navigate to Autodesk's website. So we'll just type in Autodesk on Google, and uh, it should take us to their website. Okay, here we go. So now that we're in the Autodesk website, so what we're going to do is click on products and then go to 3ds Max. Click buy, then click on free student software. So click on visit the education community and then go ahead and go back and click on 3ds Max design. And then just fill out this. So I've signed in, you may need to create an account. Uh, and so then you're going to choose your version. Currently they have 3ds Max 2015. Um, but I actually use 2013 because I have a 32-bit computer. So if you're not sure what, what operating system type you are, you can go over here and go to Control Panel. Then System and Security, System. And in here you'll see 32-bit or 64. So if you have a 32-bit, don't worry just like me so go to 2013 select English and there you go 32 bit so then you're just going to download it make sure to remember this or just copy it um, and then you can just download it so now that we have 3ds max uh, which is right here we're going to need a game engine so what we're going to be using is a piece of software called unity 3d and the advantage to this is despite its name we actually have a lot of versatility um, in that the fact that we can create 3d and 2d games so this is their website um, and as you guessed we're going to go to the download page and then just click download and I'm assuming you guys can download this software easily just click next and download and it should be pretty easy so now we've got pretty much all the software out of the way and um, once you've got those you should have 3ds max and unity on your desktop so we're going to start off by just learning how to use unity because although it's simple compared to writing the raw code um, it still takes a bit of getting used to so once you've opened up Unity, you can just go ahead and click File, and uh, then New Project. And because we're going to be making this all from scratch, don't worry about importing any of this. And if you want to, you can always import it later. So let's call this First Person Shooter. So yep, that's the type of game we're going to be making. Make sure this is set to 3D, and then just hit Create. And so Unity should create a blank project for you. So, uh, so when you start up Unity, you should have something that looks a bit like this. Uh, and we're just going to make a quick little change here. Click on your game window and just drag it over. And so that's so that we can actually see like every little change we make uh, will be affected in this game view. So this is good. And so just some basic controls that we're going to be using here. Um, to move around in 3D space, you're going to right click on your mouse and then just pan your mouse across and you'll be able to look through this. 3D space. So in this tutorial, we're actually going to be creating the mouse look script, which means that when you run, a, um, run the game, uh, when you look around, you'll be able to move and look around in 3D space. Unfortunately, this probably is the most boring tutorial, but you know, we've got to get it out of the way if we want to get fun stuff like animation and stuff. So first thing we're going to do is click on file and save scene, because currently the scene, which is like the level, has not been saved. So let's call this, I don't know, main, because you know, later we're going to start creating scenes. And so in your project view, you'll see that we've created the main scene. So what we're going to do here is create some reference objects. So if you click on our camera by double clicking on it, then it should zoom to it. And uh, currently it can't see anything and that's not that exciting. Okay guys, so what we're going to be doing is actually creating a ground for our guy to walk on. So what you're going to do is click game object, create other. And here's a common mistake I see a lot of people doing is they create a cube and then scale it up really big and flatten it out. Yeah, I guess that works. but in terms of CPU usage and the way the game engine is designed, it's 
It's actually smart to click on this thing, plain. Uh, and this creates like a big flat ground. And the advantage to this is it is actually optimized for the 3D engine. So what we're going to do is just scale this up. And this um, plane actually has zero on the Y axis, which means that no matter what we change this variable, nothing will happen, okay? So let's just make it a bit bigger. Let's maybe go 10 by 10, okay? Uh, and now it's sort of clashing with our camera, so we'll just move it down by clicking on the Move tool and grabbing this green arrow. So now when we run our game and clicking Maximize on Play, We'll see really there's nothing to do but we can see that we have this plane here you know okay so let's get into the nitty gritty stuff so because we're making the mouse look script we want something for the camera to actually look at so let's just make a really basic level here and um, i'm just going to create some cubes you know scale them down do whatever it takes and maybe make some walls for him to walk around for our character which we will be creating don't worry about that so yeah Okay guys, so I've just created something really basic, so this is just going to be something that we can look around at, just to check that our mouse look script is working. But if you go ahead and look at our hierarchy view, you know, it's not looking too neat. We've got all these cubes, it's sort of hard to tell what it is. So in Unity, to create like a folder to store all your stuff, you click on Game Object and then click Create Empty. And so then we'll right click on this and click Rename, and then we'll just name this Environment. Okay, so we'll just click on our cubes by clicking the bottom one, then shift and clicking on the top one, and just dragging them under environment. So now it looks much neater. You're now seeing you know, it's really just two colors contrasting against each other. And you know, we want to fix this because this doesn't look very good. So the way we do this is because we're actually uh, missing any light from our scene. So obviously, just like the others, we'll click game object, create other, and let's create of the type point light, you know? So we'll drag this up and you'll see that it's like a big ball. So we're going to use this as sort of like the sun. So we'll do this and make our range. Let's make it 100. We'll make it really big. Um, and intensity, we'll just take this down to 0 0.8, you know. Uh, and the color, let's give it a bit of a yellow tinge. That's looking good. That's looking really nice. So now when we click play to our game, we'll see that it looks much more three-dimensional. And this looks great. I like how this is looking. Just for the sake of neatness, because we're going to be creating a whole lot of other lights uh, when we start making our environment, for example, lamps. So we're just going to do the same thing as we did with the environment by creating an empty game object, and we'll just name this lights. And you know, we'll just drag our point light onto there. So here we are. Uh, we've set up our scene. Uh, and now we want our camera to be able to move around. So what we're going to do is, um, in our assets folder, create a scripts folder. So I've already done that. And then right click in this and click create javascript so we're going to name this mouse look you can name it whatever you want it doesn't really matter and we're going to drag this under our main camera there you go so now what you can do is just double click on this script right here and then we'll open it up in mono develop now that you've opened up your script you should see mono develop and so don't be worried we're going to be writing some code here but i promise you it'll be really easy and we'll get through this like lightning so first thing we're going to do is just delete this whole function start, okay? So now we're going to define variables. So if you're new to programming, don't worry. Variables are like an object that's stored data. And this data can change, which is, you know, very, very important for what we're about to do. And we're going to be defining a lot of variables, some of them we're not even going to be using right now. Okay, so what you're going to do to define a variable is write var for var, and then write look sensitivity so that's actually the name for our variable you could call this whatever you want it would not matter the computer doesn't care now you do a colon and you're going to find the uh, type so you might want to look through this but int for example is a number but with no decimal um, string is a text but we're going to be using floats for all of these press equals five so you can set any variable of value and you can do this here or later in code and then just to tell the computer okay i'm done with this line go to the next one just put a semicolon so what i'm going to do again is write var and just follow along with all the variables that i'm going to create 
Um, so we're going to create one that's called Y rotation. This is going to be again type float, uh, and you don't actually have to um, assign a variable a um, value. So again, we're going to create another one which is X rotation. That's a float. Now we're going to do another one which is oh sorry var current X rotation. Um, and this is a float, and this won't have a value. And because we're lazy, what we're going to do is we're going to copy this line, paste it, and then just rename that to Y rotation. Now we're going to do a variable called um, Y rotation V, and this is a float. I'm going to create another one, which is, you guessed it, X rotation V. So we'll just paste that and change it to X. X. Now I'm just going to do one more variable, I promise, uh, and this is going to be the smoothness. So var uh, look smoothness. Okay, you can call these whatever you want. This is going to be a type float, and we're going to set this equal to, let me think, 0 0.1. And now you can write these in any order you want. I've just done this particular order because I want to. So now in our function update, which means that everything we write in this uh, in these two French brackets will happen every single frame of the game. So just follow along here and uh, make it just write out what I'm writing. So I'm gonna and make sure that if you've written this with a capital Y later in the code, you always have to refer to that as a capital Y. So we're gonna write log has Y rotation whoop, rotation plus equals input with a capital um, I dot capital G get capital A axis okay then you're going to create two parentheses and in these parentheses you're going to create uh, quotation marks and in these quotation marks write exactly as I do same capitalization mouse X and now this is a bit confusing Make sure in your Y rotation, right mouse X. Now I'm just going to do multiplied by look sensitivity. Okay, semicolon to say that line's done. So we're just, you know, laziness of course. We're just going to copy this line and change it. So we'll make this X rotation mouse Y, and that's fine. So now if we just um, go ahead and write one more line then our code will work okay so we're going to write transform with the lowercase uh, dot rotation and then we'll say equals q u a t e r n i o n okay that's quaternion dot and write this exactly as i said e u l e r um and then in your parentheses write x rotation comma y rotation and then just write zero comma semicolon so now if we press Control s or we go ahead and click up here and click save um now we minus this we'll just check in our console so this tells us there's tells us if there's any errors in our code so we can now press play and guess what we can move around how easy was that but if you notice, uh, you guys probably noticed this. Uh, when I run the game, I'm moving my mouse this way, and that's working. When I look up, it's moving me down, and when I look down, it's moving me up. That's inverted, and that's because I made a silly mistake. We're going to go ahead and make minus, okay? So when we press Control S, hopefully that little error should be fixed. Um, and there we go, it's running perfectly. This is great. Um, and this is really nice. But it's a bit choppy and it's not quite as smooth as a professional first person shooter game and it follows our mouse perfectly but you know we want it to be a bit smooth and that's why we created this look smoothness variable. So make sure to copy this code exactly. Let's so write current x rotation. Okay, and then say equals math f dot smooth damp now open and close some parentheses and in these parentheses and you have to do it in this exact order you'll write current 
x rotation comma x rotation comma x rotation v and it will write comma look smoothness okay semicolon and now we're just going to do this exact line of code again except change it all to y so let's go ahead and do that okay so that's great now we press ctrl s Oop. Um, and we run our game in unity okay that's great that's really nice and smooth not choppy like it was before this is perfect okay guys so we're nearly at the end of the tutorial but not quite yet okay you know how i said there's one more thing and that little thing is and this is very important you guys better listen to what i'm about to say is to give this video a like and subscribe okay guys thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed the video see you next time